In my work as an educator, a council member, and chamber member, I tend to lean toward caring for our common home. That's described in the Pope's encyclical letter, the Dado Sea. As a believer or a non-believer, you cannot argue with his writings describing the chaos in the world around us. He asks that we, in our own individual way, according to our own culture, experiences, and involvement, work to seek solutions that bind and calm rather than aggravate chaos. So on behalf of the West Orange Chamber of Commerce, I thank you for the role you play in seeking solutions that help to strengthen our community and our common home that we call West Orange. On that note, I invite the Mayor of West Orange to present the State of the Town Address. Sounds like Sue already did. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. We are fortunate to have good food and good company, but not a very good sound system. So uh, we'll make the best of it. Sue, I've run out of ways to, uh, to thank you, uh, not only for the many times you've introduced me, but for all the wonderful things you do for this chamber, for the community, or for the countless organizations you are involved with. But, I'll say what I have said many times before. We are all lucky to have you. Thank you, sir. And I would like to acknowledge Mickey Wagner. Besides her important duties working with our fire department and keeping the fire administration organized each day, her, the 10 years of work she just concluded as executive director of this chamber has been a large part of the chamber's success over the years. Mickey. In addition to your work with West Orange Cares and supporting all veterans' causes, you've always been helpful to anyone that needed it. And I thank you for all your years of service to the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Mickey. <laughs> Whether as parents, coaches and teachers, or as a community, nothing makes us prouder than to see and to celebrate the successes of our children. We have a lot to be proud of in West Orange. Success in the classroom, on the athletic fields, on stage, in music, and in service help to define our school system and speak to the promise we make to our children each and every year, to provide them every opportunity in their pursuit of achieving life's dreams. This morning, as every year, we start by taking the time to recognize some of the high school students young men and women that have worked hard to fulfill that promise. Maitili Kangala. A GPA of 4.69, an AP scholar taking all honors and AP classes, over 2,100 on the SATs, member of the A team, all A's throughout high school, a math science and National Honor Society member, volunteers with Kessler Institute and volunteers as a student <laughs> it's here for Kessler and volunteers as a student tutor, a member of the French Club and serves as a mountaineer mentor, participated in NJIT science and technology enrichment program, a talented violinist and participates with the Royal Strings, waiting to hear from Columbia, Johns Hopkins, University of Michigan, Princeton and Drexel, among others, the 2016 West Orange High School Class Salutatorian, Maitili Kangala. <laughs> Krista Dong. A GPA of 4.55, full course load of all honors and AP classes, over 2,100 on the SATs, top 5% of her class and honor society member, member of the A-Team, all A's throughout high school, recognized as a national AP scholar, member of the Honors Wind Ensemble and a four-year varsity soccer player, has volunteered as a biomedical engineering lab intern at NJIT, interested in pursuing a STEM-based career, waiting to hear from Haverford College, Wellesley College, and MIT, among others, Krista Dong. <laughs> Josh Strauss. 
a GPA of 4.34, a, a science, social studies, Italian, and National Honor Society member, member of the chess club, Italian club, and team pep, elected to governor's cabinet as member of Boys State, three-year varsity member of the football and lacrosse teams, volunteers with mountaintop basketball and PAL football, volunteers with Kessler Institute, and a, and a team member with Relay for Life. Interested in pursuing a law degree, waiting to hear from Boston College, Lehigh, Syracuse, Indiana University, and University of Massachusetts, among others, Josh Strauss. <laughs> Samantha Jacobs. GPA of 4.62, top 1% of her class. Full course load of all honors and AP classes, member of the A-team, all A's throughout high school. A math, science, and National Honor Society member, serves as vice president of the Jewish Student Union, member of the French Club, and has participated in the Chemistry League. Volunteers with Adopt One Village, volunteers with After School Enrichment Program, and serves as a peer-to-peer -peer tutor, waiting to hear from Ramapo, Rutgers, College of New Jersey, and Stevens Institute, among others, Samantha Jacobs. <laughs> Henry Gardner. GPA of 4.0, a Tri-M Music and National Honor Society member and member of the International Thespian Society, member of the Drama Club and the Honors Chamber Choir, performed in several high school stage productions, founded and captains the West Orange High School Improv Troupe, has worked with New Jersey Arts Incubator, has performed with community, regional, and off-Broadway theaters, New Jersey Thespian Festival Superior Award winner, waiting to hear from Boston University, Carnegie Mellon, DePaul, Pace, Syracuse, and University of the Arts, among others, Henry Gardner. <laughs> Liam White. A GPA of 4.59, top 5% of his class, an A-team member, all A's throughout high school. A science and national honor society member, member of the Chinese club, the Unity club, and the math league, serves as vice president of the engineering club, a four-year varsity baseball player, and award-winning baseball player, team MVP, offensive player of the year, and recognized as an Essex County player to watch, and New Jersey top sophomore team. Waiting to hear from Princeton, Cornell, RPI, Maryland, Ohio State, and Johns Hopkins, among others, Liam White. <laughs> Dasha Temney. GPA of 4.61, 2170 on the SATs. Ranked fifth in her class of 473 students, an A team member, all A's throughout high school. A math and National Honor Society member, recognized with the Mu Alpha Theta National High School Award of Distinction. Two-year captain of the tennis team, sports editor of the West Orange High School yearbook, an accomplished pianist, graduated several classes from the Royal Schools of Music in London, waiting to hear from Boston College, Brown, Yale, Princeton, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, and University of Pennsylvania, among others, Dasha Temney. <laughs> Zachary Haran. GPA of 4.5, top 3% of his class, all honors and AP classes, member of the National Honor Society, participated in the West Orange High School Institute for Mathematics and Science, volunteers with Kessler Institute and Daughters of Israel, a Science League team member and vice president of the Astronomy Club, a volunteer tutor and members of Skills USA, member of the soccer team, interested in a career in chemical engineering, waiting to hear from Lehigh, University of Pittsburgh, Villanova, Rutgers, RPI, and Stevens Institute, among others, Zachary Haran. <laughs> Brian Cran. GPA of 4.0, 1990 on his SATs, a social studies, math, and National Honor Society member, has served as a volunteer coach with the Recreations Department lacrosse program, volunteers with Daughters of Israel, Vice President of the Spanish Club, Officer with the Institute of Citizen Empowerment, Captain of the Lacrosse Team, and recognized with all conference honors in both sophomore and junior years, three-year varsity football player, and served as senior captain, waiting to hear from University of Michigan, University of Pennsylvania, University of Pittsburgh, and Rutgers, among others, 
Brian Cran. Joel Poku. GPA of 4.23, top 10% of his class, a science and national honor society member, volunteers with the food pantry at his church, serves as camp counselor and an Italian club member, participates in the West Orange High School Institute for Mathematics and Science, National Academy of Future Physicians, and National Society of High School Scholars, participated in the People to People Ambassador Program and the National Youth Leadership Forum, waiting to hear from American University, Brandeis, George Washington, Northeastern, Tufts, and College of New Jersey, among others, Joel Poku. <laughs> Matthew Wang. GPA of 4.25, over 1,900 on the SATs, top 10% of his class, all honors and AP classes. Volunteers with Kessler Institute, member of the Chinese Club, president of the Chinese Honor Society and a Social Studies and National Honor Society member. Three-year varsity tennis team member, participated in the National Youth Leadership Forum in Washington, D.C., interested in pursuing a career in international relations or government, waiting to hear from Boston University, Northeastern, Syracuse, George Washington, NYU, and Tulane, among others, Matthew Wang. <laughs> Rushil Garala, GPA of 4.1, 1900 on the SATs, a math and national honor society member, volunteers with Kessler Institute, <laughs> Barnabas Health, member of the Air Force Junior ROTC, Vice President for Skills USA, member of the chess club team, and was a founding member of the robotics club, a second degree black belt in Taekwondo, and a multiple time tournament champion and instructor, a qualified IT essentials and networking academy technician, waiting to hear from Cornell, Johns Hopkins, Northwestern, University of Pennsylvania, Princeton, and NYU, Rushil Garala. Brianne Adamante. <laughs> Little housekeeping here. GPA of 4.7, an AP Scholar Award winner taking all honors and AP classes. Member of the A-Team, all A's throughout high school, over 2,000 on the SATs. President of the Italian Honor Society, President of the Social Studies Honor Society, and an English, Math, Science, and National Honor Society member. Volunteers with Kessler Institute, member of the Italian Club and the Essex County Math League, captain of the volleyball team, waiting to hear from Boston College, Boston University, University of Chicago, and Vanderbilt, among others, the 2016 West Orange High School class valedictorian, Brianne Adamante. These impressive young men and women remind us of what is possible when you combine hard work and an honest commitment. They inspire each of us. They inspire their classmates and teachers, and they have provided us all a small glimpse into the very bright futures that lie ahead for each of them. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2016 West Orange High School Mountaineers. And before we close the discussion on our impressive young students, I would like to acknowledge one more, a superstar in our household, my son Robert. <laughs> Always the shy one. Robert uh, will be graduating this June along with the classmates we've met uh, so far this morning. Rob, you have grown into a warm, good-natured young man with a kind spirit, and your mom and I are proud of you. In 2015, our fire department responded to over 5,000 calls for service. Our police department responded to over 50,000 calls for service. 
Over 250,000 items were checked out of our public library. Our health department issued over 5,000 different licenses. Our construction department reviewed and issued over 2,800 permits, and there were over 34,000 visitors to Ginny Dunkel Pool. We paved almost three miles of municipal roads, and we plowed over 50 inches of snow, and all that was just another routine year. Day after day, year after year, our township workforce strives to provide the best in municipal services from health and public safety to public works and recreation. The most effective government is government that maintains order and provides structure, but stays in the background, allowing people the opportunity to enjoy their lives. We are blessed with men and women that work hard each day to make that possible. Beyond our employee workforce, we are blessed with a vibrant and inspired volunteer community serving our boards, commissions, and civic organizations, helping to define the heart and soul of our community and inspiring the very belief that each resident, each in our own way, can truly make a difference. The Mayor's Sunshine Fund, created decades ago thanks to the generosity of our residents, quietly closed out the year providing complete Thanksgiving dinner baskets to 150 families and 275 local children received Christmas gifts they may not have received otherwise and all was just another routine year. We enjoyed improvements to our parks and neighborhoods. We celebrated holidays and fireworks, survived the storms of winter, the joys of summer, reveled in the opening of the Arts Council studio in the Valley Arts District, and we enjoyed the first of what we hope will be many Edison Concourse the Elegance Classic Car Shows. Our new library director, David Kuby, finished his first full year with our library. We welcomed Heather Prokop, as our new municipal court administrator, and our high school soccer team was just one goal short of their second state championship in three years. And all was just another routine year. In all we do each year, the best of what we can provide is a peaceful, quiet, and safe community for each of you to call home, for the men and women that make that possible, and for those that govern, there is no such thing as a routine year. Governing is a partnership, a partnership with the residents and taxpayers, as well as a partnership with our township council. It is a pleasure to work with our council and we are fortunate as a community to have dedicated and hardworking people willing to serve in this capacity. Council President Victor Cirillo, council members Susan McCartney, Jerry Garino, Joe Krakowiak, and Michelle Casalino work hard each day to improve the township and to ensure West Orange remains a strong and desirable community for all our residents. I offer my thanks to each of the members of the Township Council and look forward to continuing to work together. <laughs> Councilwoman Michelle Casalino is new to our council, appointed to her colleagues this past fall, but she's not new to public service. Michelle was elected three times to our school board, serving the school community for a decade. She's a lifelong resident, raising her three children here along with her husband, Tony. Both Michelle and Tony have spent decades serving various community organizations and programs, and she brings a lot of energy and experience to the council. I wish you the best of luck, Michelle, in this new challenge, and look forward to work with you. The vacant council seat, filled by Councilwoman Castellino, came as a result of the unexpected resignation of Councilwoman Patty Spango. Patty proudly served the council since being elected in 2008 and re-elected in 2012. She was hardworking, eager to assist our residents, and brought years of business experience to the council. Patty and her family have operated Starlight Pizzeria for over 50 years, making it one of the oldest family-operated business in town. This past summer, she was provided the opportunity to serve as Essex County Deputy Director in charge of elections and once approved by the State Senate and the Governor, she accepted the position. This past month, the television show Restaurant Impossible ambushed Starlight and brought new life to this township institution and pride to her community. Patty is on a new course in life and I am happy for her. I thank you, Patty, for your years of service, your friendship, and wish you the best of luck in all that life has brought your way.
Be prepared. The Boy Scouts of America have taught that to young men nationwide since 1910. Only six years after setting on that path, they came to West Orange as Troop 2 started on their mission to teach young men the important values and lessons embedded in the spirit of the Scouts. Since then, over 1,700 boys in West Orange have gone through the ranks of Troop 2, and nearly 60 boys have earned the rank of Eagle Scout, the highest rank available in the Boy Scouts. In that time, countless men from our community have dedicated themselves to Troop 2 and to instilling those values in the youth of our town. Jim Michael has amassed the longest tenure in Troop 2. His time in the troop began as a scout himself 60 years ago in 1956, and he is currently a committee member and treasurer. Ron Panuska and Doug Perry have over 50 years of service to the troop. Their lengthy and distinguished service has been followed by today's leaders. Tim Brennan now serves as scoutmaster and is assisted by Jack Dean and Courtney Smith. Vincent Ganella serves as committee chair and the four current assistant scout leaders, Brian Olin, Sean and Michael Cowley, and Jack Michael, are all Eagle Scouts themselves. West Orange has been blessed with a long and proud history of service to the Scouts, Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, and the countless number of people have made that possible for Troop 2 throughout the decades. 2016 marks the 100th anniversary of the Boy Scouts, Troop 2 of West Orange, and we take time today to celebrate this milestone and to salute all the men and boys that have made that possible. Congratulations to the Boy Scouts, Troop 2 of West Orange. I suspect many people have driven down Main Street over the years, passing the West Orange Elks building along the way and have not given much thought to what goes on within their walls. My years growing up here were no different. The Elks were simply a team I knew from the PAL. But I've learned that they are more than just longtime team sponsors for the PAL and the Mountain Tops Leagues. The West Orange Elks, March 1590, officially came to West Orange in October of 1932 and settled in their Main Street address in the early 1950s. Since that time, they've quietly gone about the business of relentlessly and faithfully supporting the causes that are important to them. This begins with veteran services. Without looking for attention or fanfare, they regularly visit VA hospitals providing supplies, picnics, or entertainment, and just as frequently host events and parties for veterans at their hall here in town. They collect and provide a taste of the comforts from home to send each year to units deployed overseas. And perhaps most important to this community, they have been steady supporters of our Memorial Day ceremony and the anchors of our Veterans Day ceremony each November. Additionally, as part of their national charter, they provide support, entertainment, and friendship to children with special needs. Each year, they send local children to Elks Camp Moore for summer recreation programs and host more than 500 children during their open house day at the Turtleback Zoo. Besides being longtime supporters of the PAL and mountaintop leagues, they regularly donate tens of thousands of dollars supporting organizations and causes like the Community House the PDA, Boy Scouts, Holy Trinity Food Pantry, High School Scholarships, and the St. Patrick's Day Parade, among many others. But more than all that even, they rarely say no to anyone that needs help. They may need temporary support or someone that just needs a helping hand. Like a trusted old friend, they have been loyal and a steady force in this community since they first established their charter, and it would be hard to imagine civic life in our town without them. Today, it is long overdue, but it is my pleasure to offer thanks on behalf of a grateful community as we recognize the West Orange Elks as our Citizens of the Year. our members and our lodge officers, we are very much appreciative of receiving this award. As Elks, our mission statement is to provide support for special needs children 
veterans, and to our community. And we are very proud to uh, help support in these areas. I'd also like to thank all our health members that are in attendance today. Um, due to their efforts and all our uh, elk uh, members, um, we are able to make a difference. Thank you. Many of the services we provide residents each day are easily recognizable. The sirens of emergency vehicles, the sounds of our trucks plowing the snow on your streets, or the splashing of children enjoying another summer at Ginny Dunkel Pool. But each day, in the quiet of the offices of Town Hall, there are township employees that come to work with the simple hope of fulfilling the important little tasks that keep the wheels of government moving. Only a few have ever worked more years, and no one works with more enthusiasm than Denise Urso. This past month, Denise celebrated her 30th anniversary working full-time for the township. After graduating West Orange High School in 1985 as part of the first combined Mountaineer class of West Orange High School, she joined the health department in January of 1980, 1986 and has been there ever since. Denise became deputy registrar in 1996 and registrar in 2010. But her service to the health department, her service to the township and to the residents of this community has always been about more than just titles. She's been a steady and friendly face, a smile and understanding voice helping residents deal with the important but sometimes mundane tasks of securing dog licenses or getting the paperwork in order as they prepare for their wedding day. Her career has been characterized by consistency, cheerfulness, and a dedicated commitment to making each and every resident feel important. Denise has spent more than half her life with the health department, but she would be the first to tell you that her family is her whole life. She married West Orange police officer Jimmy Urso in 1992. They were blessed with their son Michael in 1993, daughter Julia in 1997. Michael recently completed his college career at Bloomsburg, and Julia recently began her career at Bloomsburg. Denise comes to work each day with the same enthusiasm as she did as a 17-year-old filling part-time hours while still in high school. Even when working each day this past several months through treatments for breast cancer, she made sure the residents were greeted with the same smile and cheerfulness she knew they expected. She recently completed her treatments, and we are grateful for her good health and blessed to have her as part of the township employee family and counting on her to be part of that family for many years to come. Please join me in welcoming and thanking our Employee of the Year, Denise Erso. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I could just go sit down. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Undoubtedly, each year, the one frustration shared by each of the 565 municipalities in New Jersey is the struggle with property taxes. Ever present in our planning, in our discussions, in our delivery of services is the impact it will have on the next year's budget. The budget process has no memory and does not give awards for past successes. We have reduced our municipal workforce by 15% since 2010 with a reduction of over 60 employees since 2006. We have privatized maintenance services, enjoyed significant reduction in trash disposal fees, and reluctantly have eliminated several programs. We implemented a self-insured medical program for our employees and retiree health program for our, and have saved a million dollars since the plan inception. In the last two contracts, our employee unions have agreed to several concessions, including a pay freeze in four of the last six contract years and no increase that ever exceeded a 2% raise in any one year. We did not raise taxes in four of the last six budget years, have had no capital budget spending in three of the last six years, and have restructured debt to save significant dollars from our annual debt payments. But we have done all this while still providing essential services to our community, maintaining our infrastructure, and meeting our responsibility to our residents. 
And despite these successes, we are once again facing a significant operating deficit for 2016. Relentlessly, fixed costs like insurance or basic operating expenses continue to rise year after year. This presents the frustration and the unrelenting conflict when compared to the one and only real source of revenue municipalities can count on in New Jersey, property taxes. We've not yet completed the budget process for 2016, but it will require the elimination of several more positions. It will require another careful review of all programs, any and all expenses, large and small, and in order to keep our police and fire emergency services at the same levels, it will require a tax increase. The only equal to the frustration of the budget process itself is the frustration of raising taxes. Raising taxes in a state where we already pay too many to begin with. This process will unfold over the next few months and will count on the input of the Township Council and our residents alike. But this year's budget presents a serious challenge and may ultimately impact the delivery of the services we've grown accustomed to. On a lighter note, the 65th annual St. Patrick's Day Parade will take the annual march down Main Street in just a few months. <laughs> Every March, we are provided to a rich, colorful, and musical introduction to the Irish culture. Bagpipe bands from all over the East Coast, organizations from all over the state, and groups from all over town come together to celebrate the patron saint of Ireland and to celebrate community. And once again, members of the township family will be among the honorees. Fire Captain Brian Aker and Police Lieutenant Michael Keir will be honored as Deputy Grand Marshals for this year's parade, recognizing their contributions to the parade and their years of service to our township. The parade has not always marched in the same direction up Main Street each year, but it has always been connected with that historic thoroughfare. It is only fitting that this year's parade recognizes an additional honoree whose business and record of community service is forever connected with Main Street. John McElroy, chairman of the Downtown Alliance and longtime downtown business owner, will join Captain Aker and, Michael and Lieutenant Keir among this year's Deputy Grand Marshals. Congratulations to each of you. We look forward to honoring you and joining you in another successful parade. Important community traditions like the St. Patrick's Day Parade were born from a combination of ethnic and community pride and the result of a group of residents joining together with the common purpose to celebrate that pride. That is distinctly an American custom and one that has helped to define West Orange for generations. Important township traditions have their roots in the celebration of ethnic pride. Irish, Italian, Jewish, African-American organizations, or the dozens of nationalities represented in our school system and in our township have shared that pride with us in the form of parades, events, celebrations, and festivals for decades. This past year, we welcomed the latest addition to the symbol of ethnic pride. The West Orange Hispanic Foundation took roots this year and has quickly made an impact. The Hispanic Foundation was the creation of Deputy Mayor Rodolfo Rodriguez along with Isabel Stroh and with the help of their newly created board. They are already making a significant contribution to the neighborhood and to their township. In just their first year, they hosted multiple celebrations at the Oscar Schindler Performing Arts Center, a successful toy drive, and are quickly mobilizing the Hispanic community and introducing ways for our residents to find the support and assistance they may need as they work to fulfill their American dreams. I thank Rodolfo, Isabel, and all the members of the board, and on behalf of this community, we offer our continued support. In what each of us had hoped would be a quiet New Year's Day and start to the long holiday weekend, turned out to be a devastating loss, not only for our community, but for our history itself. We woke to the images of a beloved landmark burning uncontrollably. The St. Mark's Church building dates back to the early 1800s and will certainly not be easy to, be, to replace. The process promises to be long with many challenges, but the township is committed to working with the church and the experts each step with the hopes that together we can return the property and the church to its proper prominence. While flames still burn that morning, 
The township's historian Joe Fagan was on the scene working to chronicle this tragedy and to remind us of what we all had inadvertently taken for granted for decades. Beyond the sadness of this tragedy, it reminded us that we have perhaps taken our historian for granted as well. Joe Fagan grew up in West Orange and was officially designated the township's historian in 2012. But he has been serving in that role long before he officially accepted this volunteer position. He has published three books about the history of West Orange with, with his fourth, West Orange Revisited, coming out this spring. In addition to bringing back the revolutionary era Williams family clock to West Orange and countless other important historical contributions, he works in cooperation with the Downtown West Orange Alliance to produce and host the monthly production of the local television show, Discover West Orange. We are fortunate to have Joe. He entertains us while reminding us at the same time that history does matter and it is our responsibility to honor that. We are enriched by his contributions and grateful to count on them. Thank you, Joe Fagan. Redevelopment. Sometimes it's hard to even say the word out loud. <laughs> like a children's board game, we make a few moves forward, followed by a few moves back. But slowly, over too many years to count, we have inched our way toward the finish line. The fanfare of the Main Street Edison Lofts project of 2008 was turned away by an historic recession, and the progress of 2012 was derailed by litigation. Both are behind us now. Last year, the project and the township welcomed the new partnership as Dune Real Estate Partners joined Prism Partners and Greenfield Capital. A majority of the township council approved this partnership in August, and a lot has happened behind the scenes since then. But admittedly, not enough. If the question had come up in 2006, I would have said the project would be done by now. The project, the question had come up in 2008, I would have said the project would be done by now. 2010, 2012, and so on, and so on. I accept responsibility for these delays. They are a reflection of this community and not the reflection that we hope for. But do not be discouraged, I'm not. Complicated projects come with complicated problems, and we have encountered a few in the last few months. But these paperwork issues have been dealt with, and like the many obstacles in the past, they are behind us. The redevelopment partnership is ready to close on the $70 million construction financing. However, final closing will require township council action. A $150 million project, three financial partners, the lender, the township, thousands of pages of documents, and four law firms. We should not be surprised that some of the contractual language needs to be amended for final closing. These changes are minor and do not change the structure of the project or the township's position, and these amendments will be scheduled at an upcoming council meeting. The ridicule and scorn this project has generated may be warranted but that does not change the fact that this project has survived the many hurdles and challenges it has been presented with. It does not change the fact that $50 million has already been invested in our downtown and another $100 million is about to be invested. A major and important step in the progress of the Main Street Corridor and for our community. Following council action, this long suffering project and redevelopment of the several acres of land that was first declared a redevelopment zone 16 years ago will finally begin full-scale construction and help to change the face of Main Street. I may not be able to make some people believe that, but this year once and for all will show that to be true and this project will be built. Like any opportunity in life, school, career, or time with our families, 2016 will be what we make of it. As a community, we are enjoying improving real estate values, are treated to the best of local services, surrounded with every modern convenience within a short drive of our homes, and spoiled with all the temptations and pleasures in life. 
a variety of food, entertainment, art and recreation, businesses that satisfy every taste, that challenge our bodies, invigorate our minds, or simply soothe our souls. LA Fitness will join that list in 2016. Cambria Suites near Essex Green and AutoZone on Main Street recently began construction. And the recently improved diner on Eagle Rock Avenue will begin construction in the coming months. All to join the small and large businesses that fill our neighborhoods and fill our appetites. In 2016, Congregation AABJ&D will celebrate their 50th year as part of West Orange and Green Hill Retirement Community will celebrate their 150th anniversary. The highly anticipated Slide the City will join the annual Downtown Street Fair this June and West Orange's own astronaut Scott Kelly will return from his year in space, eventually make his way back to his hometown and share his experiences with us. We are surrounded with everything we could ever hope for from life, left only with our willingness to reach for it. 2016 will be what we make of it. Every life tells a story with sad days and successful ones. From the quiet to the well-known, the blessed to the challenged, from the fallen to the heroic and the inspired. Nearly 50,000 stories are told every day in West Orange. Stories of families that venture out each morning hoping to make dreams come true. Stories of hardworking business owners that spoil us with life's pleasures. Dedicated volunteers that encourage us with charity. And stories of children that bring us to our feet while still not yet out of high school. Each story told each day may have different endings and many leave us with different lessons. But each is told with one thing in common. Each is forever tied to our own story. And all are told against the backdrop of the two hills of the Wachong Mountains where we find this, the township of West Orange. We may have potholes on our roads. We may not always get the answer we want and we may be flawed in our humanity, but life does not have to be perfect to be fulfilling. And the more we foolishly look for perfection, the more that passes us by without us ever taking the time to recognize the meaning and the value in our lives. We are treated to wonderful services, safe streets, quiet parks, great programs, stimulating schools, the arts, entertainment, and most importantly, wonderful neighbors and people to share it with. We pause today, if only this once a year, to reflect, to be grateful, and to remember just how lucky we are. We are in a special place, not for what surrounds us, but because it is our home. We are neighbors, we are friends, we are connected in geography, joined in spirit, we are blessed, and together we are West Orange. Thank you for listening. <laughs>